Hey, what's going on, crypto people? It is the Crypto Siege with another day in the life, in the crazy life that is the digital asset says. Good morning to you. Happy Monday. Wow, what an interesting uh, last couple of days with all things uh, beer cold <laughs> the last few days. Uh, so the 27th, the stimulus package, or stimulus or spending package, depending on how you see it, got uh, signed uh, by the Donald, President Trump himself. And so I wanted to cover an article. It's, it's an older article. It's three years old, actually. But, you know, we said on this channel a number of times that, you know, the Donald has a plan, right? And, it, and, and then one thing I think is really, really important to note is that, um, not only does he have a plan, and I'm going to share something from you for you guys on Twitter as well that I thought was really, really interesting. And I saw uh, the conference, actually, the, the press um, um, conference, the press uh, meeting, and I heard him say it. He said it two or three times. I found that to be very interesting as well. But so it's two things. He has a plan, and I think he doesn't forget friends as well. So I'm going to share an article with you. And I think it's important to kind of note this overall, the bigger picture. So getting Donald out of debt. Well, let me just, let me say this first. This is your XRP Ripple daily news in zero to 10 minutes. Let's do this. So getting Donald out of debt. This is from Forbes, the 25-year-old ties that bind Trump and Wilbur Ross. Well, who is Wilbur Ross? Let's go over that. I believe he's the Commerce Secretary for the Donald at the moment. So uh, there is uh, the Donald, President Trump, and Bobo Ross. It says here, America's first billionaire president is riding into the White House with popular support, and he's bringing some billionaire friends with him. One of them is distressed asset investor Wilbur Ross, who was Trump's pick for Commerce Secretary. The two have a history that spans more than 25 years. There's an article here from Forbes that says Trump finances the Taj Mahal with $675 million in junk bonds at a 14% interest rate. Trump made a bold bet on Atlantic City when he opened a third casino there, the colossal Taj Mahal. In April of 1990, even riskier, he financed the project with 675 million in junk bonds at a 14% interest rate. Within months, Trump was struggling to make the massive bond payments as Atlantic City uh, floundered, right? So it was a, a cover article, Forbes covered there. Then um, this is another article, looks like from Forbes as well. Um, Wilbur Ross, former head of Rothschild Inc.'s bankruptcy advising team, Trump's pick for Commerce Secretary. Business ties to Trump spanning 25 years, and he's got a hat on there. It says, make America great again. In step Ross, then head of Rothschild's Inc. bankruptcy advising team to represent bondholders who were pondering forcing the casino into involuntary bankruptcy and ousting Trump. Ross reportedly saw crowds pressed against Trump's limo windows to get a peek at the mogul and realize the value of Trump's celebrity. Yep, so there is another one there. Trump gives up 50% of his stake, gave up 50% of his stake, but receives better debt terms and keeps control. So that was the arrangement that he made with Wilbur Ross, who is uh, at that time was the head of the Rothschilds, okay, bankruptcy advisory team if you will. So he struck a pre-packaged bankruptcy deal. Trump would give up 50% of his stake in the Taj Mahal, but would receive better debt terms and would remain in control. The Donald was back in business. He ultimately made similar deals for his other troubled properties and climbed out of debt and back into the Force 100. And, uh, you know, I've heard this said a few times, and uh, it, I have to agree that, listen, this is a guy who is used to dealing uh, with debt, managing debt, managing billions, if uh, millions, if hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars in debt, managing it and somehow always able to come out on top, somehow able to um, win, if you will. And so 
this is exactly the situation that the world is in. It's a massive debt, but US, US of A is, uh, is certainly in a big time debt situation. I think it's 23 or 24 trillion, right, for the United States debt. I believe that to be accurate. And so here's a guy who's used to doing that and managing that and making deals, making deals that deal with this debt. And so, um, you know, this is going to be huge. And I, and, and I just, it just feels though, um, you, you know, it's just, just something, I'm not politically left, right, on, uh, sideways, up or down, but there's something about a guy who comes out on top. There's something about a guy who just manages just to win time and time again. And this is his wheelhouse. This is where he plays. He plays in debt management. And so I just think that's very, very important uh, to know. So, uh, so this is, uh, this is from 2013. Okay. Uh, investors, including Invesco and Jared Kushner, again, a Forbes article, buy five Brooklyn properties. I said something on Netflix about this guy, apparently wasn't the best uh, of landlords, if you believe uh, what was going on, if you believe the Netflix uh, thing. So uh, Prospect Street, 81 Prospect Street, Adam Street, Sand Street, Pearl Street. Interesting. This is not too far from where I grew up, as a matter of fact. So Ross went and went into private equity in 2000, Wilbur Ross, forming W.L. Ross & Company. He still runs it, but he sold it to an investment firm in Vesco in 2006. Interesting. For some $375 million. In 2013, Invesco partnered with Trump's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, and others to buy five industrial properties from Jehovah Witnesses in Brooklyn for $240 million. <laughs> interesting, interesting, right? So again, you got to put things together, Kushner and Kirsten, Kirsten and Ripple. I, wow, interesting. So uh, what is this? As of May of 2016, Trump holds 250000 to 500000 of Invesco, Invesco stock. Hmm. So nearly all of Trump's wealth is tied up in real estate, but he also owns stocks. One holding, according to May 2016 filings, was uh, between a quarter of a million and half a million worth of Invesco European Growth Fund Class Y shares. Trump claims to have sold his stockholders in June, though he has not provided evidence to support that claim. This is an article here in New York, uh, New York, Palm Beach, Florida. This is Ross and Trump, right? So Trump and Ross are also neighbors in both Florida and New York. Not only is Ross 16,000 square foot home just up the road from Trump's 126 room uh, Mar-a-Lago club in Palm Beach, but the two also share a 57th street address in Manhattan. So Ross penthouse is just two blocks from the president's elects Trump Tower triplex. Isn't that interesting? For those seeking influence in Washington, the president's cabinet is the highest echelon. While concerns about potential conflicts of interest mount, one person who will have the command in chief's ear is his billionaire pal. Ross. Will Trump and Ross' latest deal be good for American balance sheets, uh, balance sheets or their own? I think both of them personally. I think both of them personally. And um, again, you can't argue the fact that this is what the guy does. This is, again, his wheelhouse. This is where he puts this his playground when it comes to debt management. And again, the guy manages to come out on top for, for whatever the reason is. Even this example where um, you know, uh, you know, well, he may be popular or a beloved. This guy Wilbur Ross comes in, recognizes that, and and does a situation to keep it going. And so, who knows what it is? It might it it might be about the you know his uh, the Donald President Trump's ultimate desire, which is to for the U.S. to be number one, stay number one, never lose number one, right? Uh, so those things are um, undeniable, uh, in my opinion. They're undeniable that this is what he wants. So we'll see. We'll see ultimately what it is. Could it be 
you know, I always say that Donald has a plan, right? So it could be part of some of it with Ross and, Kurs, uh, and um, Kushner. Again, for us, you know, from the deep dive people like uh, CKJ and uh, what is it, uh, SPQR Media, who tied Kirsten's and uh, um, uh, Kushner, right? Um, is it Kirsten and Kushner? Yeah, I think it's Kirsten and Kushner. And uh, Kushner, um, you know, those are some ties that lead back to Ripple. And so, again, they know about the digital asset. There's no doubt in my mind that they know about XRP and Ripple and the company. But I thought this is something interesting that we should look at. Um, did I lose it? Let me see if I uh, did put it here. I thought this was very interesting. So shout out to the Digital Assets Daily. Now, I saw someone else on Twitter point this out as well. But I just think this is important to know. So the bill provides for these checks to be delivered, this new stimulus bill or spending bill, which is spending package, however you want to look at it. Bill provides for these checks to be delivered. This is from the Donald himself. The bill provides for these checks to be delivered through the existing states, um, the, the existing states UE system, whatever UE stands for. Many of the states have very antiquated computer systems that are 45 years old, and they're not prepared to handle this kind of distribution, this kind of money coming in so quickly. They're not set up for that. And he actually said um, in another one, he's, he, not in another one, but um, it's just not here, where he said that we will reconvene. We will reconvene if the states aren't able um, to handle it properly. I, see, I can't find it here. To reconvene. Yeah, it's not on this one, but he said it in that same press conference. I didn't save it, but in, not in the same press. In the same in the same talk here, he talked. He said it three times. We will re reconvene. First of all, he mentioned the fact that the state system was very antiquated. He said that two or three times, and he also said that if the states can't handle it, we re we will reconvene so that we can put it out and we can do it. And I and I'm thinking to myself, why that statement? Why would he mention the fact that the state's system is very antiquated? What is the deal with the Fed and the U U.S. Treasury essentially now doing, uh, taking over, taking charge? U.S. Treasury taking charge, right? And why would he point out again two or three times in this little thing here outside the White House, right? Doors, when he mentions the fact that the state's because he said, and he said it, he made a point of saying this as well. I didn't want to do it, but I was outvoted. I didn't want to do it. I wanted us to do it ourselves, but I was essentially outvoted. So the states are going to do it. But also we're going to point out to, to all of America, look, the state system is antiquated. It's very old and antiquated. And if they don't do a good job of doing it, who determines that, by the way? Who's going to determine the old, they didn't do a good job of giving it out to the people? Who's going to determine that? Right. And reconvene Congress and figure out uh, and then decide to do it themselves. What does that look like? What does that system look like where they can do that instantly? Get that to people instantly. What is that looking like? You can't forget the Kushner, the Kirsten's, uh, Greg Kidd, Kirsten's, one or the other, uh, and Kushner. I forget now uh, who it is. It might be all three. It might be Kushner, K Kidd, and Kirsten's, but I, I forget. But there, I know there's a working relationship there. I know that uh, Jared Kushner owns um, uh, 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 a publication in New York. His brother actually runs it. Kushner's brother runs it. And uh, it was either Kate or Kirsten's who actually worked um, for them. But, but I forget which one right now. So don't quote me on which one. But one of the two, Kirsten's a kid, worked at that particular um, New York publication. So Ties did a ripple and XRP without question. They know about it because there's not, there's, there's, you cannot overlook the fact that ripple was mentioned in the new financial system, executive order 13772, um, signed by President Donald Trump, uh, put together by Mnuchin and someone else. So you can't forget that. That is just the deal. That is just the reality of the situation. Mnuchin, Treasury, the Donald doing what he's done with the Fed and essentially just, I don't know what you want to say, pushed them out. But everything now 
is going to be kind of done through the United States Treasury. These ties are important because it does tie back to the Executive Order 13772 that the Donald, President Trump signed, Mnuchin put together with the help of someone else, I forget the guy's name, and it mentions Ripple there. So we'll see. I got a sneaking suspicion that it's going to kind of come out that the states are not doing a good job of getting this money out to people. I got a kind of sneaky suspicion that that's going to come out. <laughs> that the Trump, that the uh, the states are just not doing a good uh, job of getting this out to people. How many people are buying it? Are you buying that? I'm, I'm really kind of thinking that's what's going on there. Why did the Donald have the president uh, have bring in another billionaire to be commerce um, secretary? Ultimately, you know, make America great again is a, a goal. I don't know if it's the ultimate goal, but it is a goal for this presidency. That is what I'll question. That is what I'll question. The guy came in, the president, Donald Trump, came into office stating that he was going to um, do something about the debt in the United States. I don't know if he said fix it, get rid of it but he said something in relation to the debt in the good old US of A, right? So those are planned. Those are things, that, you know, these are top five things, the debt, debt management, making America great again, right? What is this new financial system? We talk on this channel all the time. We, like, we, we, say, we say it all the time. The, the Donald has a plan and there's no chance, and, and, and in my humble opinion, that he is going to let the opportunity of a lifetime for him and his presidency Re-election, right? This good old American company. This good old American company in um, Silicon Valley by the name of Ripple. A good old U.S. of A, make America great again company. <laughs> that is Ripple. That has the, the, the best uh, uh, project and digital assets in the world that its main focus is cross-border payments where the Donald can say and have people say that this is the first place this is a good place this makes sense for us and the world to start and cross borders and we found this good old US of A company that has this product and software that does it, that's reliable, that has been working with the United States government from day one, is cheaper, faster, transparent, immutable. And the Donald is gonna let that slip through his fingers. He's gonna let that slip, that opportunity slip through his fingers. I don't think so. Mnuchin knows about Ripple. The Donald knows about Ripple. You kind of you get a sense that Mnuchin is kind of kind of running things, if you will, from the Treasury standpoint. They both know about Ripple. They both know about XRP. And to me, in my humble opinion, there is zero chance that the Donald is going to let that opportunity to talk about the grid OUS of a company that is Ripple that can help deal and solve something that everyone agrees is an is a easy a first is a, what is it what i want to say the first challenge to solve that makes sense to central banks it makes sense to the bis it makes sense to the imf it makes sense to the world bank to focus in and solve the cross border payments dilemma cheaper faster transparent reliable, immutable. It, there's no way, in my humble opinion, that the Donald lets that opportunity slip through his fingers. I don't see it, guys. I really don't. So <laughs> I'm excited about it because I just, I can see it happening. Whether it be Mnuchin mentioning it, Clayton, the Donald, I think it's going to be either Mnuchin or the Donald. Who's going to say it? We've all, we all talk about it in the XRP community. Who's going to be the one? It's going to mention, are they going to mention it? I believe that they will mention it. I believe that they will mention it, and I believe they'll talk about cross borders. It may not be some big, huge press conference, but somewhere, somewhere, somehow, one of those two will be interviewed, and they'll talk about, and they'll say that this is a company 
It's a good old USFA company is solving this major issue in cross-border payments. I really do believe that. All right, guys, listen, I'm gonna wrap up this video like I do all of my videos and remind you of this. Old money doesn't want you to win. They don't want us to win. They would rather us remain a cog in their perpetual wheel of trading our time for dollars. They don't want us to play, play in the same playground that they play in where we allow our money to work for us. This is our chance to win, guys. The digital asset space is our chance to win. We are in the midst of the greatest transfer of wealth in the history of man. Are you participating? Or are you standing on the sidelines? Here's what I do know, that the battle for you has already been fought and the victory is yours. Go get it. I'll talk to you soon, guys. See ya. Bye.